we're going to start our 2021.6 discussion with curves because it's going to use a lot of functionality that's going to show up later when you get into mesh from mask options. So first what we're going to do is we're going to create a sphere in our scene to manipulate. So we're going to take out of our tool menu here, you can go into the tool palette. Let's go ahead and choose sphere 3D, drag down on our canvas, go into edit mode or hit the T on your keyboard and then go over here and say make poly mesh 3D. So that'll get us into a sculptable state. So now that we can manipulate this object, let's go ahead and hit B to bring up our brush menu, C to narrow it down to all the brushes that start with the letter C, and in there are curve brushes. Now these aren't the only curve brushes in ZBrush, but there's some. Uh, we'll start simple and we'll just grab this curve tube brush right here. So with this brush, if you just click on your object and then drag off, it'll create a curve with a tube attached to it. And if you want to manipulate this curve, all I have to do is hover over the curve. You're going to see my cursor goes from red to blue. So while it's blue, I can click and drag on any part of this curve, and it'll go ahead and just move that curve around. Now you're going to have a start point and an end point on any curve that you create. And again, while well, we have the red icon out here, and then when we move in close and it turns blue, that means we're manipulating the curve. If we go out here, this means we're back in brush size mode. So if you want to change your brush size, hold down S on your keyboard, and then you can just move your cursor back and forth. That's actually a new feature in 2021.6. Uh, you used to be able to just tap and then move, but to save you a keystroke, you can just hold down S and then move your cursor back and forth. So you're gonna see if we make our cursor very large and then we go and tap to update the curve, it'll make our tube larger. And then again, move your cursor away from that curve, hold down S, make it smaller, tap again, and that'll reduce the overall size of your curve. Now again, that is the overall size of the curve. You can also go in here to Z intensity and you can lower that down, tap to update the curve, that'll make it flatter, raise it up, tap it again. And again, these curves stay dynamic. You can always go in and move them. You can update them to other curves. In fact, if you go in here to B to bring up your brush menu, I to bring up your IMM or insert multi-mesh brushes, you're gonna see some of these have curves attached. So here's IMM curve, go ahead and tap that one. And you can go up here and you can scroll through different types of curve brushes you want to use. So for example, this necklace link or this bracelet link. You can also hit M as in Michael Pavlovich on your keyboard and you can choose them in here too. So again, you can choose bracelet link, tap this curve to update it, and then your curve will update. If you want to switch to this necklace link, just click the necklace link and then again, tap the curve to update and that updated our curve. So again, just click through here and some of them are going to be set up in ways where it might spread these out a little bit further. But again, we'll go back to the necklace link. We'll go ahead and tap to update that. And if you ever want to get rid of this curve or basically lock this geometry into place, all you need to do is go over here away from the curve and just tap on the object and you'll see it deletes the curve. We're going to go in here to our stroke menu, drag that little white dot over here into this docking station we have on the side. Just double click these divider arrows that'll open up this left hand side. And we got our stroke menu over here now. If we open up the curve modifiers, hold down shift while you open these menus and they'll all stay open. So you have curve, curve functions, and curve modifiers over here. This is what is gonna control the curve that we're manipulating now. And you're gonna see under curve functions, there's a delete button here. So if you drag out a curve, again, you can either tap on the object and delete the curve, or you can drag out a curve, and you can go over here and just hit that delete button. Now, if you open up our subtool menu, underneath our tool menu here, you're gonna see we just have one subtool. So all of these are on one object here. If I wanna split these curves off, a couple different ways we can do that. If you turn on your polyframe mode here, control drag to unmask, you're going to see, I'm gonna switch over here to a skin shader four in our material so you can see a little bit better. These all have a polygroup with a different polygroup for the start and end, and you have a different polygroup for this sphere here. So we just hold down control shift and click on the sphere. We can either go down here and say split hidden, or I can go in here to geometry, modify topology, and just delete hidden. So all that geometry is gone now, and we're back to just our sphere. So as you probably guessed, we're just doing a quick refresher course on curve functionality, and we have a few new options in here, so let's talk about those. Uh, again, we have our necklace link selected with our IMM curve, so we can just click and drag off of there, and again, we can just make our brush size bigger or smaller, and then tap to update that. And over here under our curves, we do have as line, so when I click and drag a curve, it's going to make it a straight line. Just hit Control-Z to undo all those. We can turn that off. Uh, we have snap, and that's going to snap it to our surface. So even as we drag this around, it's going to want to stick to any underlying surfaces there. 
And if you want to make this longer, you're going to see that there's a little rubber band that comes out at the end, that little red rubber band. If, as long as that's activated at the end, you can go through here and you can continue to drag these out. And in fact, you can go over here in the middle and then you can just cross this over and just continue to make this bigger in the middle as well. Now you're underneath here, you can see a, there's a new bend start and a bend end. In previous versions of ZBrush, it was just bend on or off. But now if I drag out a curve, you can see we have a start and an end to our curve. So with bend start activated, which in this brush it's activated by default, if I click in the middle of the curve and I start moving this around, you're going to see the start and everything up to the point you're clicking on will be bendable, but everything past that point over here is going to say static. So that's just going to kind of move around. Oops, kind of got a little bit weird there, but you can see I grab it in the middle. This on the right hand side is going to stay static. Everything else is going to bend to the left of where I push. I can also switch that so we can say turn off bend start, turn on bend end. And now when I click in here, it's going to keep the start up to my point static and then the rest of that curve is going to bend. And of course, if you turn both of them on, then you're back to the regular functionality of, hey, everything's bending. And if you turn them both off, now it's just a solid piece moving through. So if you wanted to make duplicates, you could go down here under Curve Functions and click Snapshot or hit 5 on your keyboard. You can see when I hover over anything in ZBrush, it'll show you the name, the hotkey for it, and you can hold down Control and get even more information on it. It's kind of a built-in help menu. Uh, so again, we can hit 5, go ahead and drag this off, hit 5, drag this off, and that's just a way for you to drag off duplicates. Now you are gonna see it is going to interact with the other objects here. If you don't want that, just turn off snap. So now it's not gonna to snap to any more surfaces. And now when I hit five, it'll go through and just ignore those other surfaces. So to get rid of this curve, let's go ahead and tap again on our sphere here. Let's control drag to unmask, control shift tap our sphere again, and then geometry modify topology, delete hidden, and we're back where we started. Now let's go ahead and turn on bend start and bend end. We'll drag out another curve here. Now we've talked about how you can lengthen these things. And again, if this red rubber band is too snappy or it, you, because I'm way out here and it's already snapping back there, so it's gonna add to that curve. If that's too much, just turn off or turn down this curve snap distance here. You can turn that down to like maybe 13. And now you have to get very close to the end of that in order to continue that curve. If you go in here to elastic, you can actually pull from the back here. So you can actually pull this around and create new geometry. And liquid, you can go through and you can actually pull back through and start deleting curves and adding uh, to that curve. Go ahead and turn that off. We also have lock start and lock end. So we have bend start and bend end. So the whole, oops, the whole thing is bendable here. However, I can say lock start and lock end, and then now our start and end points will be locked as we're manipulating this curve. Speaking of making, manipulating the curve, again, our cursor is going to turn blue when we want to manipulate this curve. If you, while the cursor is blue and you tap S to go to your draw size up here, you can tap S and make this bigger or smaller. So if I make this very small, it's only going to manipulate small areas of the curve. If I make it very large, again, while it's blue, it'll manipulate very large areas of that curve. You can also go through here and you can hold down Control and that'll start twisting in these areas. So you can make small twists with a small influence. And then you can make large twists with a large influence here. You can also hold down Shift and that'll smooth out that curve. Again, while you have uh, while the cursor is blue, and again, if you hold down uh, S to make this smaller, then hold down Shift. If you hold down Shift too soon, it'll smooth out the geometry. If you start manipulating the curve, let's make our brush size smaller here. If you start manipulating the curve and then hold down Shift, that'll allow you to kind of smooth as you go. Of course, there's also a built-in smooth, so if I make a very, very uh, bendy line in here, I can go over here to where it says Curve Function Smooth. You can see the hotkey for that is 6. And you can also control how much it smooths each time you hit this button. So you can click this button and then go and update your curve or again hit six on your keyboard a couple times and that'll continue to smooth your curve out. Now there's some more stuff going on in here. There's repel strength and intensities and uh, even under here under brush modifiers there's some curve resolution stuff. We're going to get to that next as we head into a new brush which is brush curve alpha.